Welcome. Here are 10 short stories in probability theory. The first story is at the origin of Martin Gahl's theory in probability theory. Martin Gahl's are processes which, where the past does not influence the outcome of the next step. The origin is in a Martin Gahl betting strategy, which is uh, uh, you go in the casino, and maybe you, you, you bet $100 on black, and if you, if you win, you, you win the $100 and you leave. If you lose, you bet $200 on black. Now, if you win, you have won uh, 400 but spent 300 and you leave with this $100 and so on. You can always, with doubling, you can eventually win. The second story is about conditional probability. The Monty Hall problem is maybe a little bit too much a cliche problem here. To illustrate this, I'm using an example of Martin Gartner, which is older. Dave has two kids. One of them is a girl. What is the probability that the other is a boy? You would say maybe one half intuitively, because well, how should that influence the first information, the second? But uh, conditional probability tells you otherwise. You have a probability space of four elements, boy, 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 girl, girl, boy, girl, girl, which every of these cases has the same probability. And then the conditional probability space is then just three elements. This is the information that one of the kids is a girl. And then now you look, there are two cases there where we have a boy. So it's two thirds. The formula for conditional probability is a definition. And the Bayes formula then uh, in yellow is something which immediately follows from the, from the definition. A random walk is a stochastic process where one moves in uh, any in, in given directions with uh, the same probabilities. We assume that each step is independent of each other. This is a Martin Gall. George Polya has uh, shown that if you look at the random walk in two dimensions, so if you have a random process there, drunken mouse returns infinitely often to the origin. A random walk in two dimensions is recurrent. While in three dimensions, the random walk is transi transient. A drunken sparrow will return only finitely many times and then escape to infinity. We can probe the length of a curve or curvature or other geometric quantities using random processes. For example, length you can evaluate by putting random throwing random lines on the object and count how many times it hits. This is the Buffon needle problem. I programmed that uh, six, seven years ago in JavaScript. So this is a kind of a couple, you see a couple of experiments. You count how many times you hit the grid and then the fraction hit over count is going to two over pi. Sometimes theoretical results do not match reality well. Sometimes it's just unpractical, for example, to wait too long. The Petersburg Casino is a great example illustrating this. It's been uh, designed by uh, Nicolas Bernoulli. So the casino, uh, you pay a fee, maybe $100, and uh, you win two to the n dollars if head turns up n times before a uh, tail comes up. So in this case, we have hit five times head and then comes a tail. So we win $32, but we have paid $100. So we, we lost $68. $100 nobody would pay. Actually, even $10 nobody would pay if you make the experiment. But mathematically, you, your expectation is that you, even with that fee of $100, you would win. Actually, any fee, you would eventually win. <clears throat> it's an interesting phenomenon. The axiomatic setup of probability theory has been put forward by Kolmogorov. Uh, sometimes the interpretations are a little bit difficult, and sometimes also one has to be very clear what the probability space is. So the question of Joseph Bertrand is, what is the probability of a random segment in a circle to be larger than the length of an inscribed equilateral triangle? And there are three answers which give you one third or one half or one fourth. The first example is you just spin, spin the line and uh, you see the green angle is the good angle. When you, when you hit that, it's longer. So the probability is one third. The other possibility is that you roll the line. If you roll the line, you see that the, the green part is the good case. So you have one half. And the third possibility is just you throw the center. 
of the segment and then uh, you see the probability is one fourth because the green circle is the good case where it's longer. Each, each of the arguments is correct. The birthday paradox is counterintuitive at first too. It was noticed first by Harold Davenport. If you have a group of 23 people or more, then the probability that two of them have the same birthday is larger than one half, which is not what you would expect. 365 days. Do the computation. You compute it with this formula and you see that the probability is already larger than one half. There are applications in cryptology, Polas row algorithm, for example, which is used for factoring integers, is using this phenomenon. <clears throat> if you look at the digits of square root of two or the digits of pi, they appear random. Uh, pi would be called normal if every digit appears with the same frequency, 1 over 10. We don't know whether this is the case or square root for square root of 2, but we can make experiments. So, for example, I took here 1 million digits of pi and looked uh, at the number of times a certain digit appears, and they all pretty much uh, do what is they are close to the expected value. A very important principle in nature and probability theory also is the entropy principle that maximizing the entropy of probability distributions allows you to get natural distributions. In the discrete or in the continuum, Claude Shannon was defining entropy first in information theory. So here are examples. Uh, if you look at the distribution on the real line which maximizes entropy, then this is the normal distribution, the Gaussian distribution. If you look what maximizes entropy on the positive real axis, then this is the exponential distribution. And so these are Lagrange problems in infinite dimensions which you can quickly solve. Probabilistic interpretations come in also in quantum mechanics, where particles can be in superpositions and quantities like position of a particle are given by expectation in a probability space. So here are, uh, so if you have a wave, quantum mechanical wave moving uh, by the Schrodinger equation, you have then a set where you uh, want to know what the probability is that the particle is, then you have a formula for that. You can also look at the expectations of uh, Einstein was not very happy with uh, quantum mechanics and asked, does God play dice? And there is also the Schrodinger cat, which doesn't know whether it is dead or alive. I leave it with that. Here are again the figures which have been used to illustrate these 10 stories. That's it for today.